Hi. So last time we looked at sort of a graphical and sort of an intuitive explanation of what the RMS voltage is. And this time I promise we're going to just dive into actual the math behind um, a little bit more complicated of an equation. This time we're going to include the bias of um, our voltage source. But let's just go ahead back to this graph we were kind of at before and say we've got, um, in this case, we got voltage up here. In this case, we've got um, our time, or in this case, it's just degrees that are shown. And let's just go ahead and plot out our voltage first. So this was our voltage according to our equation where V of T was equal to B plus A times cosine, and let's just say 360 times our frequency times T. But something we didn't look at was if we included this um, B value. So right now I've got B is equal to zero. But if I scale that up, you can see that it's just going to raise up my, um, my voltage a little bit as I, as I move B up and down. It's just going to offset it. Um, but that has a little bit more of a pronounced effect on the power, because the power, we're squaring this, and there's two different terms in there. And if we go ahead and plot out the power, it looks like this and here. Now, of course, this is where B is equal to zero. And what we did in our last video is we kind of looked at, well, we wanted to find the average power under here because we needed to, to correspond it to energy, which is like the area under the curve. And so we found this average power that was just half of it. It was pretty easy. Um, it gets a little more complicated, though, when you add B in here. Just, I mean, graphically, you can't really use this approach because let's go ahead and just see what happens when we change B. Um, you see, it's getting kind of, it has hard, it's harder to tell now, right? It's not like really obvious that it's just half. It's, it's, um, it's getting a little complicated. It's not that mass is actually not that bad, though. We have a formula to find that, that average power. So, um, so let's get to that. And for now, let's just go ahead and move this plot up here just so we can kind of refer back to it without needing too much detail. And if you recall, we had a function for power or an equation for it. Our power as a function of time is equal to our V of T squared. It's going to be over R. But for the purpose of, of this, since R is constant, we're just going to look focus on um, P of T being proportional to um, V of T squared. So that's our blue uh, line here, our P of T. But what we really kind of want to find here is this average power kind of by this, um, this dashed line here. So let's take a look at that um, under here. So we're, we're just going to use a mathematical formula for the, the average value of a function. And it turns out, you just by the integral, you can say the average value of a function is 1 over B minus A times the integral from A to B of that function, where B and A are the start and, and end points of your integral. So let's just say that like B, in this case, we're looking at this is our A right here. So A equals 0. And over here is our B. We're looking at um, B equals 360. So um, let me just go ahead and write out what I just said here. All right, so let's find this average value up here. Let's go ahead and label it up here, um, p average. And that p average, is gonna, we're just going to base it on that equation. So we've got um, p average equals 1 over b minus a, where b is 360 and a equals 0. So 360 minus 0 times the integral from our a to b, which is from 0 to 360, times our p of t dt. Now our p of t dt is this squared, so let's go ahead and write out what this is. And it's a little, it gets a little messy here because we got to square this and that's going to be b squared plus ab cosine of 360 ft. And then we're going to square this last component, so it's plus a squared cos squared of 360 ft. So a little messy there. Um, but now we can just go ahead down to this next level here. So we'll say, again, p average equals 1 over 360. And now we can just integrate each one of these components um, separately here. So that b squared just becomes b squared t. And this ab cosine, well, that's a pretty simple trig um, integral. So we've got ab sine of. 360 FT. And remember, we've got to use a chain rule because it's got this constant inside of there. So we're going to divide this by 360 
f. And finally, we got this term, and this term is going to be a little tricky because it's not too, uh, it's not as straightly obvious what the integral of this cosine squared term is. But for that, we can refer to a trig identity. So let's just kind of block this off over here with all the extra stuff that we're kind of doing on the side. So we have a trig identity, and that is going to be that cosine squared of x over 2 is going to be equal to 1 plus cosine of x divided by 2. So we can basically take this trig identity and plug it in up here. So this is going to be this little, we'll just take a look at this little section right here before we get to the integral of it. Let's simplify it or change its form to something that we can manage. So we've got that a squared here still. But instead of that cosine squared, we're going to put this in. So we've got um, times 1 plus cosine of x. But in this case, this x is twice as big as what's inside of here. So it's twice that. So it's cosine of 2 times 360 ft, and this is all over 2. So this is going to be a squared. We'll just keep with that 2 term out here, over here. And we've got 1 plus, this would just integral, this is just the sine of 2 times 360 ft. And of course, we've got to divide by what's in the middle based on the chain rule and divide it by 2 times 360 times f. And recall, we've got to evaluate this whole thing at t equals 0 and t equals 360. Okay, so let's do that um, evaluation next. So we've got this p average is equal to 1 over 360 times b squared times 360 plus this mess here. But um, this is where it's going to help to actually determine what our f is because we actually know what our frequency is um, given we know what our period is. So you could see up here that our period was 360. So we know, but we know if that's our period, we know what our frequency is. So frequency is just equal to 1 over period. So in this case, it's just 1 over 360. So if we put 1 over 360 in here, we've, we've just got um, sine of t. And if we put that, that t is 360, that's going to be 0. So just to, as a quick um, little bit of trig over here, if we just have our sine of, sine of t function here. Say this is 0, and this would be um, 360 right here. This would be 720 here. So sine of 360 is 0, sine of 0 is 0. So whichever one you put in here, um, this is actually going to go to 0. Woo. That's super easy. Um, and that turns out the same thing for this, because it, now we got the two, 2 in here, but 2 times 360 is 720, and that's back to 0 again, too. So this is going to go to 0. That makes things super easy. So we're just left with um, this term, this whole term here going to 0. And this term here, we're just left with that one component. So it's just plus a squared over 2. Oh, and of course, this is supposed to be a t here, because I integrated that one. Um, when I integrate that, that becomes a t. So this would be a squared 2 times 360. And of course, now that these, um, these 360s are all going to cancel each other out, so our power average is going to be equal to b squared plus a squared over 2. So super, super simple. Considering how messy this was, and we just end up with b squared plus a squared over 2, you can see how this is a pretty, pretty elegantly it works out. And um, you can see, some, you know, it's got this like complicated function over here that looks like that's going to be hard to find that average power. But it turns out it's actually everything simplifies down as long as that period is as long as you're looking from A to B as a whole period, it's pretty simple. And yeah, you're not always going to have your, your sample time be a period, but if you get so many periods in here and you just get a little bit or a little bit less on the end, it's not going to really matter as long as you got a, a lot of periods in there. So this is um, close enough. And recall from here, we're going to go, we got to go from here to our um, VRMS. So VRMS we can use the same equation, that approximation that we used up here. So VRMS squared, we're going to say that's proportional to our P average. So we could say VRMS equals the square root, if we take the square root of both sides, square root of P average, which would be square root of B squared plus A squared over 2. And that is our sort of official 
definition of VRMS. And of course, we didn't have that R term in here, but that it turns out just when you when you work this out, that R term just cancels out. It doesn't really do anything. And this is actually what, what we end up with. So you can see if our B term is zero, we end up with that the same basic thing where our VRMS is just our peak voltage, which is A divided by a square root of two. Um, but if we do have a biased voltage in here, you just got to throw it under the square root. So that's why it's called the root mean square. Root. We've got the root of this of this mean, which was sort of this average um, that's in here of our of our squared voltage. So um, that's kind of where that name comes from. This is where the equation comes from. We did all the math, all the details, even this obscure trig identity. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that satisfied your need to really understand this at a super deep level at the from going into the weeds. And until next time, take care.